Have you ever paused to think about what exactly is inside your can of tuna? Most people see it as an easy, healthy protein source for lunch or dinner, packed with omega-3s and low in calories. But as your doctor, I want you to understand that canned tuna can carry an invisible risk to your brain and nervous system if you're not careful with your choices. This is not about scaring you, it's about empowering you. Mercury contamination in tuna is real, and while it won't make you sick overnight, it accumulates quietly over the years, potentially affecting your memory, concentration, mood, and even causing neurological issues if left unchecked. That harmless-looking tuna sandwich can either fuel your body with essential nutrients or slowly poison it with heavy metals. My goal today is to make sure you are making the smartest, safest choices for yourself and your family so you can keep enjoying tuna without harming your health. Let's take a moment to talk about mercury itself. Mercury is a naturally occurring heavy metal found in the Earth's crust, but industrial activities over the past century have drastically increased its presence in our environment. The main culprit is coal burning, along with mining and certain manufacturing processes. When coal is burned, inorganic mercury particles are released into the air. These particles eventually settle down into oceans, rivers, and lakes. In the ocean, certain bacteria living on the seabed convert this inorganic mercury into methylmercury, which is an extremely toxic form easily absorbed by living organisms. Tiny plankton absorb methylmercury, then small fish eat the plankton, and then larger predatory fish, such as tuna, eat the smaller fish. This process, known as bioaccumulation, means that each step up the food chain concentrates the mercury levels. By the time it reaches large fish, like tuna, the mercury levels are high enough to pose significant health risks for humans who consume them regularly. Here's where it gets concerning. Tuna cannot easily eliminate methylmercury from their bodies. Imagine storing items in a closet, but rarely cleaning it out. Over time, it fills up. For tuna, methylmercury accumulates in their muscles and organs throughout their lives. And the longer the tuna lives and the larger it grows, the more mercury it stores. When we eat tuna, especially frequently, we ingest this accumulated mercury, and our bodies, like tuna, struggle to eliminate it efficiently. Mercury crosses the blood-brain barrier and can damage neurons, impacting memory, cognition, and motor skills. In pregnant women, it crosses the placenta and can affect fetal brain development. That's why health authorities, including the FDA and EPA, strongly advise moderation, especially for children, pregnant women, and breastfeeding mothers. Mercury toxicity may sound like an abstract problem, but in my clinic, I've seen patients with unexplained neurological symptoms later traced back to heavy metal exposure from dietary habits, like frequent consumption of large fish. A crucial thing to understand is that not all tuna species are created equal when it comes to mercury levels. The safest option is skipjack tuna. Skipjack is a smaller species that lives for only two to three years, giving it less time to accumulate mercury. On average, skipjack has around 0.12 parts per million of mercury, which is relatively low. Then we have yellowfin tuna, which lives up to 10 years and grows much larger than skipjack. Its mercury level is almost triple that of skipjack at approximately 0.35 parts per million. Finally, there is albacore tuna, also called white tuna, which has the highest mercury concentration among the three, averaging up to 0.50 parts per million. This is high enough that the EPA recommends significantly limiting its consumption. Understanding this difference can protect your brain health and reduce your long-term exposure to mercury. Think of it like choosing between walking barefoot on grass, gravel, or broken glass. The surface you choose changes the risk dramatically. One of the simplest yet most powerful ways to protect yourself is by reading the label on your tuna can carefully. Many people buy tuna without even looking at the type, but this small habit change can significantly reduce your mercury intake. If a can is labeled simply as tuna, it is usually skipjack, which is your safest bet. However, cans labeled light tuna, or specifically yellowfin, usually contain higher mercury levels. Albacore, or white tuna, has the highest mercury concentration, so it should be eaten sparingly. Some brands are transparent and specify the species on the ingredient list. Others are vague. If the label doesn't make it clear, take a moment to check the brand's website before purchasing. Additionally, remember not to rely on tuna as your sole seafood source.
rotate it with other fish lower in mercury such as sardines, salmon, mackerel, and trout. This not only reduces mercury risks, but also enriches your diet with varied nutrients essential for your health and longevity. Another key mistake is ignoring how much tuna you eat each week. Mercury toxicity builds up slowly in your body, meaning the damage happens silently over years rather than days. According to U.S. dietary guidelines, the recommended seafood intake is around 8 ounces or 227 grams per week for adults. This includes tuna but also other seafood sources. For children and pregnant women, recommendations are even stricter. While tuna provides excellent protein and omega-3s, overconsumption negates its benefits and exposes you to health risks. Think of sunlight. You need it for vitamin D and mood, but too much causes burns and long-term damage. The same concept applies to tuna. Moderation, combined with species selection and rotation with other fish, allows you to enjoy its nutritional benefits safely. If you love tuna, plan your meals mindfully, ensuring it. Here's a practical tip you might overlook, but that makes a difference in your meals and possibly your mercury intake. Drain your canned tuna properly. Many people simply open the can and scoop out the tuna, leaving excess liquid behind. Whether your tuna is packed in water or oil, draining it well ensures a better texture for your salads, sandwiches, or pasta dishes, preventing watery mayo or soggy salads. The easiest method is to partially open the can, press the lid firmly against the tuna, and tilt it over the sink to drain. You can also place the tuna in a fine mesh strainer and press it with a fork to remove all excess liquid. Aside from texture, draining oil-packed tuna helps discard some of the heavy metals bound to the oil, reducing your exposure slightly. This simple kitchen habit can elevate the quality of your meals while supporting your health goals. A question I often hear from my patients is whether tuna in oil is healthier than tuna in water. The answer depends on your priorities. Oil-packed tuna has higher calories due to the oil, but it also contains more omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D. Interestingly, from a mercury perspective, oil-packed tuna might be slightly safer because mercury is lipophilic, meaning it binds to fats. When you drain oil-packed tuna, some of the mercury bound to the oil is discarded, reducing your intake. In contrast with water-packed tuna, the mercury remains in the fish and draining water doesn't lower it. However, if your goal is weight loss or you're monitoring fat intake, water-packed tuna is a better choice for keeping calories down. For patients with conditions requiring higher healthy fat intake, such as cystic fibrosis, oil-packed tuna can be a useful dietary addition. Both types are nutritious, and your choice should align with your health needs and goals while keeping portion sizes in check. The purpose of this conversation isn't to make you fear tuna, but to help you make informed decisions that protect your health while enjoying the foods you love. Tuna is rich in protein, essential fatty acids, selenium, and other vital nutrients that support your immune system, heart, and brain. The key is knowing which species to choose, reading labels carefully, draining your tuna properly, limiting weekly intake, and rotating it with other low-mercury fish. These small changes compound into big benefits over time, reducing your risk of mercury toxicity and preserving your cognitive and cardiovascular health as you age. Knowledge is power, and every mindful choice you make in the grocery store contributes to your future well-being. Now that you understand the hidden risks and smart strategies to enjoy tuna safely, I encourage you to take action starting today. Next time you go shopping, check the labels, choose skipjack when possible, plan your weekly seafood intake mindfully, and share this knowledge with your family, especially parents, pregnant women, and older adults who are more vulnerable to heavy metal toxicity. Remember, your health is your greatest asset. Every meal is an opportunity to nourish and protect your body and mind. As your doctor, I am here to empower you with knowledge that leads to stronger choices, better health, and a life filled with clarity, energy, and vitality for many years to come.